Hello everybody, in this video we're going to be talking about what actually is a matrix. And that might seem like kind of a weird topic to be talking about on this data science channel, um, because matrices are the very first thing we learn in our introductory linear algebra course, or even before we might learn them in high school in Algebra 2, for example. They seem to be the basic building blocks for everything we do afterward. So why are we taking a step all the way back to what actually is a matrix? Well, the reason is that in my studies and in my experience, I realized that there's kind of two different ways to think about the same object that we call a matrix. There's kind of the computer science student's perspective of what a matrix is, and there's the math student's perspective of what a matrix is. And neither of them is correct. Or, I mean, they're both correct. Neither of them are necessarily correct, I should say. It really depends on what application you're using the matrix for, and we're going to get into all of that. So the first thing we'll talk about is the computer science student's perspective. So from a computer science student's perspective, a matrix is just a n by m array of numbers. So for example, if we were to populate a few of them, we put like one here, we could put two here, we could put five down here. Let's say this five is at position i, so row i, and then column j, okay? So we would say that if this matrix was called a, and we want to index it, a i j is equal to 5. And that's mostly what a matrix is for a computer science student's perspective. It's a type of data structure that stores numbers or maybe strings or whatever inside of it. And we can index it like this. Um, what kind of things do computer science students care about uh, with matrices? Well, they care a lot about the speed of various operations on matrices. For example, if I want to access an element like this in the matrix, how long does that take? If I want to uh, add one matrix to another matrix, how long does that take? If I want to delete a certain element from a matrix, or if I want to change a certain element of a matrix, or if I want to do an operation on every single element of a matrix, how long would that take? Um, and, and they care about these things because usually in computer science, if you're using a matrix, you're using it to store some set of values. And as that set of values grows lengthwise or column-wise, um, we care a lot about how bad our performance is going to suffer. Is it going to go up like exponentially, linearly, what's the deal? So that's kind of the computer science student's idea of a matrix, and this is a very powerful concept if you plan on using a matrix for data storage, changing the data, deleting the data, things like that. So that's where that comes in. Now we're going to jump over to this side of the board and talk about a math student's perspective of a matrix. And in this channel, we're going to be using this perspective a lot more just because we're touching on a lot of the foundations of data science and linear algebra. So this, um, this perspective is going to be a little bit more useful for our purposes, okay? So from a math student's perspective, a matrix is a type of linear transformation. So let me try to elaborate on that a little bit. So this matrix is an n by m matrix. So this n by m matrix, its job basically is to take a vector that lives in Rm. And for those of you who need a refresher, Rm is basically the space of real numbers, a vector that has m components in it. Can you see that there? Um, so yeah, this got cut off. This is a vector that has m different components in it. So this matrix, its job, its role, is basically to take any vector that lives in Rm that has m different uh, numbers in it and map it to a different vector which lives in a completely different dimensional space, which is R n. So this has n different components in that vector. n can be bigger than m, it can be the same, it can be smaller, it doesn't really matter, okay? So the job of this matrix is to take a vector in R m and map it to a vector in R n, okay? And how does it do that? Well, it does it through a basic matrix vector multiplication. So if we take a vector, let me erase this here, if we take a vector like this that lives in R m, uh, and we do this multiplication with this matrix A with this vector V, we're going to get back a different vector. Um, I've run out of room here, so I'll put it right down here. We're going to get a different vector which lives in R n. Okay? So that is what a matrix is. I want to make this idea a little bit more concrete. So we're going to go through a couple of examples of how a matrix does this linear transformation uh, in ge geometric space. Okay, so here are two different matrices. We see that this one here is a rectangle. It's 2 by 3. And this one here is a square. It's 2 by 2. And they both represent linear transformations. So as we saw before from the math student's perspective of a matrix, this uh, matrix here, A, 
is going to map a vector that lives in R3, so three-dimensional space, onto a vector that lives in R2, so two-dimensional space. So that's the role of that matrix A. Matrix B, on the other hand, maps a vector living in two-dimensional space to a potentially different vector living in two-dimensional space. Now let's look at geometrically how these transformations actually look to get a feel for what does a linear transformation actually imply. The harder one to look at will be A, so let's start with A first. Let's, uh, since it's going from three-dimensional space to two-dimensional space, let's try to draw a three-dimensional coordinate axis as best I can. So, and then I'll put one coming like this. So here's the X, Y, and the Z axis, okay? Now let's take a vector in three-dimensional space. Let's take the vector, um, let's do, the X will be two units, the Y will be one unit. Actually, let's do Y is three units, so it's here, and then the Z will be one unit, let's say. So that vector looks like this. It's the vector two, three, one. What happens when we feed that vector two, three, one into our matrix A? So what's gonna happen is we're gonna get one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero. And we're gonna get two, three, one. If you remember your rules of matrix vector multiplication, we basically multiply one by the two. So we get two plus zero by the three, we get zero, plus zero by the one, we get zero. And then we do zero times two is zero, plus one times three is three, plus zero times one is zero. So we get the result as two comma three, okay? So I'm gonna write that right here. So we get the result as two comma three. And how do we see that on this plane? So that's basically two comma three, like right there. So if uh, it wasn't already clear, what this transformation is doing is the best way to imagine it is, let's say there's a light source coming from above on the three-dimensional plane. This is saying that if you have any vector in the three-dimensional plane and you take a light source from above or maybe a light source from below if it's negative, then what is the projection of that three-dimensional vector going to be on our two-dimensional xy plane? And you can see why that's happening, because basically what this transformation is doing is preserving the x-coordinate, preserving the y-coordinate, and zeroing out the z-coordinate. So the z-coordinate always ends up as zero. In fact, it doesn't even really exist anymore. Uh, and all we're doing is just preserving the x-coordinate in the top one and then the y-coordinate in the bottom one. Okay? So that's the type of linear transformation this matrix does. Now let's close the video by looking at the type of linear transformation that's done by this other matrix here, B. So again, let's draw a picture. Let's say we have our coordinate axes. Remember, here we're working just in two dimensions to two dimensions. So let's say our one, two, three, four, one, two. Let's say this is our uh, vector. So this is four comma two. What happens to four comma two when we run it through this linear transformation B? Remember, that's done by executing a matrix vector multiplication. So we have 2, 0, minus 2, two uh, negative 2, 0, 0, minus 2, and we run through 4 and 2. And what do we get back? So we're going to get back negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. This is 0. 0 times 4 is 0. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. So the vector we get back is at minus 8 and negative 4. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way over there. So that vector looks like this. Now what, how does that vector compare to that vector? Well, it's double the length, right? Basically this one was four, two, this one is minus eight, minus four, so it's double the length, and it's pointing in the complete opposite direction. So the, if you took this and you rotated it 180 degrees, that's the direction it points in. And you can see why that's the case if you look at matrix B. The double the length part is the easier one to see. You see that there's two here, so it's going to double every single coordinate that gets put into there. We see this zero and this zero here, right? So that means that it's preserving the x coordinate in the negative fashion, it's preserving the y coordinate in the negative fashion, and it's doubling the magnitude of both of them. So that's kind of how that uh, numerical story translates to this geometric story. So this whole video was just to say that from a math student's perspective and for a data science perspective, um, it's going to be best to kind of think about matrices as linear transformations, as objects. Yes, they are collections of numbers, um, but they are collections of numbers that we need to treat as 
uh, operations taking val uh, vectors from some space into some other space, whether that's a higher dimensional space, a lower dimensional space, the same dimensional space, um, it's one of those options, okay? And of course, the computer science perspective of a matrix is going to be very important for other aspects of data science, like when we have data frames in the code and we care about how efficiently they're getting manipulated. But for the conceptual part, um, it's best to think about matrices as linear transformations mapping vectors from one space to a different space. Okay, so until next time.